<laughs> so the storyboard sketch for animation. Let's see if I got all my, there we go, got stuff back. So the first thing I'm gonna do is establish my setting. And you are required to use one assignment that you've already done or, or one um, exercise. So my setting is the one with the water tower and the ice. And I'll just do a little drawing of it in this little church here. That's it. Then I am going to introduce my character. That's why there's always space in between storyboard frames so you can make notes. Now, sometimes you'll do this with a camera move. You'll zoom in, you'll zoom out. But I'm just going to keep it as simple as I can this semester, so I have a lot of time to help you. So as I introduce my character, since I've already introduced my setting, I, I barely need to draw it, right? But now my character is going to come in this way. My character is big, Godzilla-like. It's going to come in from the upper right-hand corner. So feel free to use arrows. They're kind of a very common visual communication tool in storyboards. So the, the creature is going to come in from this corner and perch right here. Okay, then the creature is going to move. So my character is going to do a little shuffle. Birds, when they land, you know, they, they flap their wings, they kind of cushion, slow themselves, and then kind of shift their weight into their legs. I want to see if I can animate that. Then the setting's going to start to change. And because I, I kind of know that though my bird's here, he's going to kind of shuffle. I'll do a little movement arrow. I don't need to draw all that well to understand. Now the setting starts to change, but a certain part of the setting, I actually want the church, like the lights are going to turn on in the church. It's going to start to glow a little bit. So that's the new focus. And then the church is going to glow some more and its roof is going to start to open up like a box. So the glowing gets bigger. I'm not going to do any panning camera moves, but you can see how that could work. Right? I could pan back and forth if I had a whole scene to shoot. Then at about the midpoint, this big beam of light is going to shoot out from the, the opened roof church right onto my creature. It's like a defense mechanism, like a search beam, a tractor, tractor beam. Then it's going to slowly pull the creature in. The creature is going to kind of shrink and get sucked into the building. So I'm going to, the glow, the beam, and now the last three is the suck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. good suck. suck one, suck two, oh. suck three. <laughs> because this is kind of the big surprise, right? So this is the thing I want to animate, and I want to make sure... I, I'm going to make... You guys are going to love this. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> you want that part of the animation to take some time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's when we come back and eat So it's going to get taken off of its perch, and it's going to shrink and warp and kind of almost dissolve a little bit. I'm thinking Star Trek tractor beam into this church and then the lid is going to close on the church. The roof closes. And then it's very nice because it's set as that roof closes, then it matches the first frame and it's set to loop again, which is a nice benefit of a GIF animation. Okay, so what are the ideas? These are my ideas. <laughs> and I want them to be clear in the storyboard. And I want them to be clear in your sketch. They don't need to be clear to me, they need to be clear to you. You need to know what you're intending. You might change your ideas slightly, but I guarantee if you keep this simple, you'll find lots of little moments to have fun with it in, in the in-betweens. So I'm going to save that as my storyboard sketch. 
or assignment five. And I could put that up to photo bucket right now. And that's a good placeholder. It shows me I've started, started the process. I'm committed to it now. Now, how does animation work? This is my idea. I'm going to have to start building the assets I need to animate. And those come from past projects. So the one I'm going to demonstrate with, and I invite you to, to follow along with me, is the cloud creature that we just finished. So I'm going to open up assignment four, the Photoshop file. This is print quality resolution. I'm going to open up the PSD, right? Because this already has some simple assets. And I'm going to start combining them like we've done in the past. The first asset it has is the sky. So I am going to turn everything off. This is an easy way to kind of merge assets. And I'm going to turn on just the sky layers. And remember, these can be played with with opacity. They can be modified. So these are assets that are versatile. But if I like this guy, I'm going to combine both of those layers by holding down Shift, selecting them both, going to Layer, Merge Layers, hitting E. I'm going to label it Sky Asset. Okay. The next asset I have is the cloud. So I'm going to build my cloud out of all these composite layers and my clone stamp layer, and then turn the sky off. And you'll see that the cloud is all on its own, as its own asset. I'm going to hold down Shift, select all those layers, and then do Layer, Merge Layer, or use the shortcut, which is Command-E. Merges them all into one layer. So I have a cloud asset and a sky asset. Lastly, I have a creature asset, which is already merged together, even though it took multiple sources to, to make that creature. We have a nice, clean, cutout creature asset. Now I think, OK, how do I want to use these? Well, I want to animate first this creature turning into the cloud. Because remember, our animation is all about transformation. The transformation for my storyboard is the, the setting changing, the church changing, and actually then making the, the creature change by getting kind of shrunken and sucked in. Here I'm going to tr transform my creature into the cloud. So this is basically a really simple way to do this assignment. But because I'm showing it to you, none of you will do it. Okay. So I'm, I'm taking this... this uh, this lazy quiver out of your bow as an option. All right, so here we have the creature. Here we have the cloud. What do I have to do to animate from this to this? Those would be two storyboards, right? Cloud, then, or creature, then cloud. So this is how it works in Photoshop. As long as I have each asset on a separate layer, I can work them individually. So I go to Window, and I turn on what's called the Timeline. It's near the very bottom. The Timeline shows up here. We're going to learn basic frame-by-frame -frame GIF animation. So on this drop-down menu, I click Create Frame Animation. And it will give me this Timeline. Okay. Then I go to the, the Frame Animation Tools, so these are the windows, and these are the window tools. And I'm going to say, make frames from layers. So what Photoshop does is it will make a frame on your timeline, one for each layer. And all the timeline does, this is an important distinction, these are not layers. This is simply showing you how Photoshop is programming this eyeball, right? So that eyeball is turned on for only one layer at a time. So if I want my first frame to be just sky, and I want to slowly introduce my cloud, well, then my next frame will be the cloud with the sky. So I'm going to turn on the eyeball for the sky underneath the cloud. But maybe I don't want my cloud to show up right away. So what am I going to do? Well, I can take that on this frame, on this program of the eyeball, I can also set a different opacity for each layer. So I'm going to take that cloud, and I'm going to make it 
I'm going to do this pretty quick, so I'll do 33% opacity. Then I'm going to duplicate that frame, right? which is the icon right next to the trash. It's a new frame, and the new frame will duplicate the last frame, which doesn't take any memory, because remember, this isn't saving pixels anymore. It's just saving what the, the opacity is for the layer and which eyeballs are turned on. So next, on that frame, I'm just going to up the opacity a little bit to 66. On the next frame, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to up the opacity to 100. Now I want to transform that cloud into my creature. So on the next frame, I can do it on the one it gave me. I'm going to turn on the cloud at 100%, turn on the sky at 100%, but turn on my creature. I'll make this a little slower at maybe 15%. Then duplicate. 30% or something close. Duplicate 60% or close. Duplicate 80%. Duplicate go to 100. Now that's fine, but does it look like the cloud is transformed into the creature or does it look like the creature just slowly appeared in front of the cloud? So what do I need to do now with another asset for each of these? I need to slowly make the cloud disappear so that by the end, the cloud's not there at all. So I might go back to my frame and say, okay, now on this asset, let's take that down all the way to 20. Here, let's take that down all the way to 40. Here, let's take the cloud down. And there are lots of ways to do these kind of cross dissolves to 60. And then I think, okay, now it goes like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. But that might be too fast. So I might decide that it needs to not take as long. Okay, so how do I test it? You see underneath each frame, there's a little time. I can hold down shift, select all of them, and then the default time that I use for animating in, in Photoshop is just a little bit faster than three frames per second. A professional animation is 24 frames per second. Right? GIF animations are not as smooth as professional animations. It takes up too much memory. You can make them that smooth, but I'm not going to. Right? You're going to see that, that 0.3 frames, basically a little bit faster than three frames per second, is fast enough. So 0.3 is my default. So I'm going to set the time to that. Then I want it to play through forever, not just once. So it's going to loop back and forth. And then hit play. Cloud appears, transforms. Very fast. If I decide, I can stop it. If I decide at any time I want a frame to take a little bit longer, I can make a duplicate of it. and I can play with its settings. So I can have this appear a little bit more, have this disappear a little bit, and then see how that works in the test. So how do you change the time under the frame? You click on it, and then you say other, and then you type in the timing. You can set a different timing for every frame, but in general, that's a pain. <laughs> so. Until the very end, just use one default timing for everything and just add frames where you need it to slow down. Okay, now how do I do movement, right? I've transformed, but everything stayed put. So now I've got my bird. What if in the next panel, I want my bird to move? Well, I'm just going to use the move tool and move him. Now notice the frame will remember where he was placed before but the next frame will show him moved. Now this is kind of the cool thing. That's a pretty big movement for one frame. So that's gonna look way too quick, right? This is where digital helps. Not only can it make perfect copies each time, but I can hold down shift 